Hello everybody, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. Welcome, it's Friday. I bet you guys didn't expect to see me here today because I have been at Mastermind this week. Um, if you don't know what a mastermind is, it's when people who are like-minded in business or maybe at this, a similar level of business get together and they chat about business and they um, do hot seats and trainings and things like that and they help each other with things they're struggling with in their businesses. And so I've been in North Carolina at a mastermind this week and I actually was not expecting to be home today to do a live with you guys. Um, because I was supposed to be flying home tonight, but plans changed and I was able to come home a day early. And so I actually didn't even tell my husband. I just showed up a day early and surprised him. And it was funny because when I got home, he was asleep on the couch. And I woke him up because it was like 1030 last night. And when I woke him up, he gave me the most bewildered look. Like, what are you doing here? And did I sleep past Friday? Like, <laughs> why are you home? And uh, he, But he was really happy to see that I was home early. Um, hi, Casey. Hello. Hey, Tammy. Thank you. She says she loves this shirt. This shirt is um, was in my framed monogram box this month from Sarah. So if you know about framed, it was the, the main item in that box and I love it. It's got my monogram on it. Good morning, Ashley. Hello. Hello, hello from Cali, from Cali, Columbia. Oh, cool. We've also got people watching from TikTok. So today, instead of doing our normal Friday Fab Five like we normally do, I had planned on painting live with you guys at some point when I got home from Mastermind. So I decided we would go ahead and do that today since I didn't have five of my favorite things lined up because I wasn't expecting to do a Friday Fab Five. So we're going to paint together today instead. Is that okay? Um, and before we get started painting, I wanted to remind you guys that our Christmas door hanger workshop is starting November 1st through the 5th. So if you want to learn how to paint this fun little Christmas tree cake design on a wooden round, um, it's just $10 to sign up. For those of you watching on TikTok, there's a link in my profile. If you're watching on Facebook, you can click the link up above. Um, it's $10. We're going to give you guys a printable template that you can use to trace on your wooden round. You just print it out on your home computer. It looks like this. Tape it together, and then you're going to use graphite paper to transfer the design to the wood so that you have the lines on the surface of your circle, um, and you can just paint inside the lines. makes it way easier. And so we're going to be teaching that over five days in November. Um, yes, it is wood. It's made of wood, and so you'll just have to pick up like a wooden round. You could get them at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I think even Lowe's and Home Depot carry them. Mine is a quarter inch thick. You may have a hard time finding the ones that are that thin, but I did see an ad from Michaels in my Instagram the other day saying that they were selling the ones that are thin now, so you might check there. Um, and then uh, if you want to just order one from us, we're selling them for $12 plus shipping. Okay, so today we're gonna be painting this little hot cup of, a cup of hot cocoa. It says warm wishes, and it's in like a little blue tin mug that has speckles all over it. Let me, I don't know why I'm trying to explain it to you when I've got a picture right here I can show you. So this is what it's gonna look like. We're gonna paint it like this so you can see we're gonna do a little bit of splatter paint on the bottom part of the mug. We'll do a little bit of shading also up on the whipped cream. So that's what we're fixing to do. And then as since it's Friday, let me show you the new designs we've released in the shop. So we've got this one, it's a little Christmas ornament with some cute little leaves and berries. So even though this is a very basic shape, these designs are laser etched in the surface, just like you see here. So you're not going to have to freehand those little leaves and berries. And I think this would be a really good reversible design because you could turn, like you could flip it around and paint something on the other side and make it like a fishing bobber for summertime. We have this one that's a little stocking with holly berries. And then we have this Christmas tree with swirls and ornaments. And then we have the leopard print gift box. The leopard print is etched on the door hanger. And then we have a snowflake ornament. So all of these are half price between now and Sunday in our shop. Um, that's the templates only, not the wooden blanks, unfortunately. We aren't able to run those half price. But if you have a laser cutting machine or a scroll saw or a jigsaw, you can get the template and you can cut it out yourself to paint at home. Um... See, Tammy says she loves the tree. Which one was your favorite? Tammy says the tree was her favorite. What's y'all's favorite? Are you guys glad we're painting today instead of doing <laughs> instead of doing Friday Fab Five? I love Friday Fab Five, but I didn't have five things 
on my list, so we couldn't do that today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start doing my base coat of my blue on this little um, mug. I'm just wetting my brush, and then I'm picking up the blue. The blue is called True Blue. It's a Deco Art Americana paint, and um, I have dropped one drop of black in with the blue to make it just a tad darker because I wanted it to be just a, a little bit darker. Not quite navy, but just a hair darker. You like the tree. Rhonda likes the snowflake. Diane loves the tree. Um, hello. Uh, is it C Cody or Cody's Crafty Corner? I follow her on TikTok and uh, she's got the cutest stuff. Thank you for popping on and saying hi during the live. By the way, if you guys want to be notified when I go live, um, we do have a number that you can text. I have put the number up in the video description if you're watching on Facebook. If you're on TikTok, it's a little harder. I need to like put it on like a letter board or something that I can hold up for you guys. But um, I'll tell you the number if somebody wants to type it in the comments. It's 270-207-9091. Two seven zero two zero seven nine zero nine one. So you text that number, and you'll be notified when I go live. And so most of the time, I'm live on TikTok and Facebook, <clears throat> and we do these um, painting tutorials. So if you're watching on TikTok, um, a lot of you know TikTok does not have live videos that last like they don't live on TikTok. After the live's over, you can't go back and like watch the replay, right? Well, we always put these videos on YouTube as well, so you'll be able to watch the replay on YouTube, or you can come over to Facebook and watch it over here, whichever you prefer, but you can find me either place at Southern Adornments Decor. Hi, Brenda. <laughs> uh, Sheila says, I love them all. Hashtag PC sister, yes. <laughs> Thank you guys for putting the number in the comments. I appreciate that. You're sweet. So I, I feel like we have just skipped straight over fall and gone right into Christmas, but that's kind of the way it is in the crafting world because we have to get ahead of the season, right? If we're going to be setting up craft booths or selling anything that's Christmas related, we always have to get a head start. We have to start doing Christmas in October and we have to start doing uh, like fall stuff in like July, which is crazy. But um, yeah, last night we went shopping on our way home from the airport. We stopped at um, the at home store and I bought a whole bunch of Christmas stuff. And I'm like, I feel weird because I never did actually decorate for fall. <laughs> You're saying hi to Corey. I don't even know if Corey's on here. Is he? Did I miss his comment? I bet he is. Let's see. A lot of you guys typed in the text number. Thank you for that. Oh, you said you'll be by in a little while <laughs> to crash the party. That's funny. Um, you've already got trees up, Melinda. I know a lot of my um, blogging friends have their Christmas trees up already because they have to do blog posts about how to decorate your Christmas tree. And people like me who are not that great at decorating, the, like it just doesn't come natural to, natural to me. I appreciate that so much. So, um the fact that they do these tutorials and stuff for us. Where did I go in North Carolina? I went to Kill Devil Hills. It's out on the Outer Banks. So the next color we're going to use is called Gray Sky. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush though. A smaller flat tip brush like this. Somebody's pulling up. I don't know if that was Corey or who that was. Um, and then we're just going to paint the little rim of our cup. Because this is like a little metal, like don't they call them like a camp cup? Something like that, a camp, a camp mug, the blue speckled camp mug. I think they come in red specks too. But we're just gonna paint that gray, this little rim right here. And I'm just, I'm not even painting inside the lines, y'all. I'm just following the line on the bottom part of the, or right above the blue. But I'm not worrying about getting over the edge there because I'm gonna paint that brown. So you don't even have to paint inside the lines when you paint with me. <laughs> These little lines on the door hanger do make it quite a bit easier though to stay, to feel like you're staying, like you're not having to draw anything. Cause I can remember back when I started painting for the first time, like painting on door hangers, there were no door hanger templates. That was not a thing. And so um, I had to hand draw everything that I painted. Yes, the kids are in school. Karen, and thank goodness. 
It allows me to get a lot more done during the day. Kelly says you'll be in Kill Devil Hills for two weeks. I'm for vacation in November. Oh, nice. I've heard the weather's still, still good. Okay, Corey says it's not you. It may be Aaliyah then. Oh, Corey, look, you've got a little flag above your name that says Milestone Follower. I don't even know what that means, but that's kind of cool. Okay, let's get a brown. This is called Dark Chocolate. And this is going to be the actual hot cocoa in our cup. So there's another little sort of ring that goes right along here. And we're just going to paint that with the dark chocolate color. I'm not even bothering with staying inside that top line because this part hasn't been painted yet. And we're going to paint that with whipped cream. Misty on TikTok is asking, uh, or actually, let's get to my, uh, the other one question first. She said, where do you get your wood pieces? We sell them at shopdoorhangers.com. So um, you can head over there. And this one, you just type in the word Coco, and you'll find it in our shop. But we have over a 1,000 designs to choose from, and they come with the design laser etched in the surface. And then Misty said, do you make your own wood door hangers? Yes. So we design them on our iPads using the Procreate app. And I say we because I have a design team. So I didn't actually design this particular one. One of my teammates did. And um, so we have a team of designers and it's I'm one of the four. And we design the designs and we sell them in our shop at shopdoorhangers.com. Do you ever seal your door hangers before you paint anything? No, I never seal them first. I always seal them last. So after I get all the paint on them and I'm done with them, I take them outside and I give them a coat of clear acrylic spray. Um, my favorite one is Deco Art um, Triple Thick Spray. It's a really nice thick, but it's got a really nice high gloss. Um, Sharon's watching from Saskatchewan. Is that in Canada? I feel like I should know that. I think it's Canada. Oh, okay. Aaliyah's saying yes. It was Aaliyah pulling up. I wondered if it was you or if it was Corey because he said he was coming by the crash party. Well, I saw that. <laughs> and then he said, when I said somebody's pulling up, he said, well, it's not me. <laughs> I would have been surprised if Corey was like out of bed and on the road this early because he doesn't have to be at work till later. Okay. I'm, the only reason I'm drying this right now, because I haven't dried anything else we've been painting yet. The only reason I'm drying this is because I want to be able to paint my whip topping Actually, you know what? I should have been had a little bit more forethought and we shouldn't have started painting all this yet because we needed to do the speckle on our little camp mug first. Otherwise, we're going to speckle on everything. So we're going to do the speckle before we move on because I'm probably going to have to do like a touch up coat or something on this to, to cover up my splatter paint mess. Um, before we do the speckle though, let me do one more quick coat of blue and I think I want to add just a little bit of shading with a darker blue sort of around the edges of the mug. So I'm gonna add this, a little bit more of this blue here. Um, and I'm running out of it, so let me get some more. Um, do you, for something about protecting them from the weather. If you put the hanger signs outside, yeah, so you have to spray seal them so they're protected from the weather. So I always give them a really good coat of the um, triple thick spray by DecoArt. I'm just added some more blue here and I added one drop of black to it so it'd be a little darker. I ran out of blue paint. Can you cover it with masking tape? I probably could, but because it's a rounded shape, it might be, I don't know, we may try because it's a little bit more straight right across here, but it is rounded on the edges. So I'm not sure how well that would work covering it up. So I'm just giving this another quick coat of the blue and then we'll add some shading. And I'm trying to work quickly because in order to do the shading, I need the blue paint to still be wet. There's a little spot right up here I kind of missed the first time I was doing it. And the blue might have looked okay to you guys, but in person it was kind of thin looking. I could still kind of see the wood underneath. So it definitely needed another coat. <clears throat> I don't know if I missed any questions. I hate it when Facebook, oh, Cor here's Corey. He said, yeah, it won't be for a little while. Okay. I don't even know if the kids colored their coloring sheets. So this color, somebody was asking what it is. It's true blue with a drop of black in it. So now, while my brush has still got the blue on it, 
and it's uh, still damp, I'm picking up just a teensy bit of black on the top corner of my brush, and I'm gonna drag that down the side of the cup. See, it's kind of harsh, right? But while it's still there, we're just gonna carefully just keep going over it and kind of spreading it out. I'm also bringing it down along the bottom of the cup and we're shading it in. And if it feels like it's dragging and it's not, um, it's not dragging as well as you want it to, just get a little water on your brush and keep pulling that paint down along the side of your cup and it kind of thins it out just a little. <laughs> Let's see, let's do a little bit over here on this side as well, next to this handle. So we're just using black on a damp blue background with a wet brush. And the brush is not soaking wet, it's just a little wet. Get a little more along the bottom here. Such an easy way to add just a little shading. Look at that. So you see the shading along the edges? <clears throat> Hi, Vicki. Janine says, I love speckling, and that just makes painting even more fun. Doesn't it? Doing a little bit of splatter paint makes me feel a little bit like a kid. It makes the painting part more fun. All right. Um, I think I've got some. Let's, we'll try some painter's tape, but I don't really know how well I'll be able to cover that, but it's worth a shot, I guess. That way I don't have to repaint over it. Let most of that air finish air drying. So I've got some frog tape here. I'm just gonna pull off a little piece. And I'll just cover, see how it's curved at the bottom so it's kind of hard to, to, to fill that in. Maybe if I do a slightly smaller piece. I can never get the paint start, the, the tape started. It's hard because I feel like I have to trim it on the edges to make it curve up. Let's see if I can do that. May or may not work out well. And I don't want to go to a whole lot of trouble to do this because I could just paint over it. And to me, that's almost easier sometimes than trying to perfectly cut a piece of painter's tape. That's not bad. It's mostly covered. There's just one little sliver of gray that's not. So we're just going to go with that and I will just touch it up. If I get crazy and start splattering way out of place. Um, you have taken a long drive to visit and paint with Mandy Stockley. Oh, that's fun, Jerry. Great. I love it when I hear about our Painters Clubhouse sisters getting together with one another and meeting each other. All right, so I'm taking a little bit of water and I'm adding it to my white paint to water it down because it will splatter better if it's watered down. And I think I'm even gonna put just a teensy bit, actually, I'm not even gonna drip some in there. I'm gonna put a teensy bit of blue in there. Just picking it up on the end of my brush and I'm just gonna swirl it around in there until it starts to turn blue enough. Because I want, I don't want it to be white, white. If you look at our picture of our example, our splatters are more like a light blue. They're not, they're not stark white. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. That looks about right, right there. So it's not white, it's more of like a, a cloudy blue. And we're just gonna use a little toothbrush. Not my current toothbrush. <laughs> um, and we're just gonna pick up that paint on the toothbrush. And this is where the fun part comes in. So we're just gonna kind of speckle. I'm gonna do it more in a, in a downward motion. Let's see if I can do this. Ooh, yeah. So I'm just using one hand to hold the brush and the other one to, I didn't want it to look directional. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want it to look like it was spraying forward. I wanted it to come straight down. So that's one way of doing it. Another way is to pick up some paint on the brush and to just kind of get the, I'm gonna get as much as I can off of it because I didn't want big droplets, but I'm just gonna kind of, well, that was a little bigger than I planned on. Let it just kind of drip and speckle. <laughs> I like the way that looks. Some of them are a little bigger than I planned on, but I think it'll be okay. And so I'm just whacking it against my hand to let the drops of paint fall. 
and the longer I do it, the smaller the droplets get. So I kind of like the smaller droplets too. Um, you may have already said it. Where did you get your cutout? Oh, I just broke a nail. How did I do that doing splatter paint? <laughs> Oh, no, stop the live. <laughs> stop the live. Tabor broke a nail. <laughs> and that's grizzly. Like, it's oh. like needs filing. I used to have a little file, a uh, fingernail file in here because sometimes I used it for other things. But goodness, I'll have to fix that later. Look how cute, though. The little splatter paint. I think it turned out good. There's a couple of really big splatters, but it's not good. It's going to be all right. Um, save a plastic bread tie. What are you saying? And put it at the end of your tape to start it. Oh, so that I don't have to pick at the tape each time you're saying. That makes sense. Um, somebody said, I actually have this on my agenda to do today. What, splatter paint or to paint this particular design? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip it upside down and just paint our whipped topping while the rest of that dries because that's going to take a few minutes. So let me get smaller brush. This is a flat tip brush. These brushes you can actually purchase on the Deco Art website. They have blue handles. This one is a size 12 and so they come in different packs but I think their brushes right now are, I don't know if the sale's still going on, but the last time I looked they were 30% off, which is a great deal. Um, and all their stencils are also 70% off. So we're just going to start with some white and lay down a base coat of the white. And I ran out of holes in my egg carton, so I just <laughs> I just put this directly on the door hanger instead. We're just going to fill in all this area with white. And then we'll do a second coat of white, and on the second coat, we'll add a little bit of shading. Where do you buy the cups? So we sell these designs at shopdoorhangers.com. If you're watching on Facebook, I put the link right up in the video description. On TikTok, you can grab it in my profile. This one is called the, um, it's called Coco. So just type in the word Coco on the search bar and you'll find it. And um, you can get it as a, a wooden blank like this and it will come with the design laser etched on it. This is the smaller size, the six inch. The one I'm painting right now is a 12 inch size. Um, but you can also get them as large as 20 inches to hang on your front door as a door hanger. But this 12 inch size is great. If you're a wreath maker, this would look super cute tucked in a little wreath. <clears throat> or you could put it like on a shelf, like on your mantle. I think I'm going to attach mine to my big six foot tall welcome sign that's on my front porch. So I'll put this one in the spot where the letter O would go. I'll just attach it with a little bit of Velcro. All right, we got our first coat of white down. So I'm going to dry. You want to do this one this weekend, Missy? Um, I think the cup could look really cute painted red, too, because don't they make red camp cups? Like enamelware. And, oh, enamelware. I'm learning all kinds of stuff. I they didn't know what it was called. They also have white with red. White with red speckles? Mm -hmm. Did anybody else know this? Enamelware. <sighs> what size would be cute to decorate a cubicle in the office? Oh, this size. Yeah, this size would be good for, a, a, like, a, a cubicle. I started to say door, but you really don't have a door on a cubicle, but you could hang it next to your cubicle. <clears throat> okay, let's do one more coat of white. And I was going to say something a second ago, and now I completely lost what I was going to say. The white ones yes. with red speckles have red edge or black edge, and they're antique, and they're very valuable if you can find them oh. cheap. So the ones that are white with the red speckles are valuable because they're considered antiques. I don't know if I don't know if I've ever even seen one of those. I may have, but it's been a really long time. I've had a friend that collected them. Okay. I got a couple of like little spots in my paint. Let me scoop those out. <clears throat> but if you guys have been wanting to learn how to paint, I want to encourage you to sign up for our Christmas workshop. It starts November first and goes through November fifth. And each lesson each day, we'll break it down. So the first day, we'll just paint the background. The second day, we'll just do the tree. Um, the third day, we'll take a day off so you guys can get caught up. And we'll do just a Zoom paint party. And then the fourth day, we'll do like the hand lettering. And the fifth day, we'll do like a bow or something. Um, da Dana says, I have enamel ro roasters. I'm wondering if she mm -hmm. means... 
like like a roasting pan. Yes. I thought she mistyped it and meant roosters. Yeah. I'm like, well, I want an enamel rooster. I yeah, love roosters. <coughs> I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. And there's, um, <coughs> I have a, a coffee pot. A coffee pot. pot. Oh, I've seen the roasters because that's like what you can make like a turkey or something in, mm -hmm. I guess. Okay. Let's, um, while I'm going to add one more, this is like a third coat of white, but I just pretty much am adding this white because I need it to be just a little thicker and I want it to be nice and wet when I add the, um, tan color that we're going to shade in for the, the whip topping. So, and it kind of, the, the first two coats I put on were kind of thin, so we'll just thicken it up just a little more. <clears throat> but if you want to sign up for that Christmas workshop, the link is in my profile or up in the video description. It's just $10. We're going to give you the printable template so you can follow right along and you can make yours look exactly like mine. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so now we're using the color called Toffee, which is a fun little tan color. And we're just going to get that on our brush while we still have the white on there. And we're just adding it on here, but... <clears throat> we're making it like blending it out by doing more than one stroke. So I'm just going over the same spot over and over again till it starts to blend with that white. Get a little more. We're going to do it on this little area here. Just keep going over it till it blends. <clears throat> I cannot seem to get the frogs out of my throat this morning. I just keep coughing to clear my throat. Keep waiting to see when they're gonna fire up the tobacco barn next to our house here and that you always tears my allergies up I love the way it smells and I love the way the smoke looks rolling through the trees in the fall but it always tears me up <clears throat> so I'm kind of letting it kind of streak and blend out I'm bringing it around these little creases here and then as it goes toward the middle I'm trying to let it blend back into white just a little bit more so this is what it looks like. Look how good that is. So cool. Really kind of gives it more personality, doesn't it? <laughs> they make enamelware in forest green with white speckles. Have you ever seen that? Yes, now that's rare. So you wouldn't have to paint your, your little cup blue. You could do red or um, green or whatever color you want. How far in advance do you have upcoming holidays available? So right now we have up through Christmas available in new designs. So today we just rolled out five new Christmas designs. These right here. But in our shop, we have over a thousand designs to choose from, from previous years. So if you go to our shop, um, and I'm so proud of myself because this past week I had some downtime and I organized the shop into categories. So if you guys over here who are my regular followers have noticed, let me know because I'm so proud of myself. But I spent some time going through the shop. These speckles are still wet, so let's go ahead and draw them. And um, I made categories. So you can now go and look by category. You can search by Christmas designs, fall designs, baby, animal, uh, there's probably a New Year's category. What else? I don't know. Val like val all the different holidays, plus like school designs, graduation. There's actually categories that are broken down now because beforehand we didn't have categories. And when you went, the only thing you could search for was blanks or templates. And you just got all the designs and they were in chronological order from like newest to oldest. So now it should make browsing a whole lot easier. Okay, Cindy Wilson said, yes, it makes it easier to find what I need. Thank you, Cindy. Jackie says, it's the best. I love it too, girl. And I'm not done yet, y'all. Like, I'm still tweaking it and, and trying to make it more user-friendly. Um, and I'm, I'm updating a lot of the images in the shop. So it should get better even than it is right now. But I'm glad you guys have found it easier. Brenda says, although I love scrolling through all of your designs. Oh, thank you, Brenda. It was time well spent, yeah. Hi, Lori, thank you. What is the website? Shopdoorhangers.com. <coughs> it's also linked in my profile if you wanna just click a clickable link. <coughs> okay, I think these speckles are nearly dry. There's only a couple of big speckles that are still kinda of wet. And we're just gonna take a round tip brush and start painting in our lettering. And um, I think I'm going to just put a little white right next to my toffee here in my egg carton. 
And so I'm using a round tip brush. This one is a number three size. Do so you see how pointed and small it is? It doesn't have a whole lot of bristles. And so um, we're just gonna start with some white. And I'm, I may actually also shade in just a little bit of the tan. Do you see how the, the letters go from white to tan at the bottom? So I may try to do that. It's much easier to do something like that when you're designing in Procreate than it is to make it actually happen in um, like on wood when you're painting. So we'll see if I can make it happen. That will be a new test for me to see if I can do it. So as I come down here to the bottom of the letter, maybe instead of picking up more white, this time I just pick up a little bit of that toffee and start doing that color toward the bottom of the letter. And then of course I still have the white on my brush, so it's kind of blending both colors here. I'm not, ha and if you're wondering, I am not having to freehand this lettering. I am simply painting inside the lines that are already laser etched on the wood. I am just painting inside the lines. So uh, we painted over these letters with the blue paint and now we're just going back and painting them white with a little bit of toffee. I'm having to paint the letters sort of out of order because if I have too much toffee on my brush, I can't use that at the top of the letter if I'm wanting to make the tops of the letters look more white. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, Laura said, I actually designed a door hanger in Canva. It was a very simple design, but it took forever because I'm learning. <laughs> Canva is probably not <laughs> ideal um, for designing, but that's awesome that you were able to do that. Um, you, oh, somebody else on TikTok said they found it much easier to search in the shop. I'm so glad to hear that. You have to use a really light touch when you're doing this lettering because this lettering is so thin and delicate. It's more scripty. So as I'm doing these really thin strokes, I have to make sure and not let all the bristles like push down on the wood. Um, I have to just let them slightly, very lightly glide across the wood. And then when I'm doing a downstroke that, you know, is wider, I'm applying more pressure. I decided to just go ahead and paint the letters all white first because that seems to be easier than going back and forth between colors. So now that I've got one coat on that, I'm going to, as I'm doing my second coat, then I'll shade in a little bit of that um, toffee color. <clears throat> it's definitely a challenge to get two colors in lettering, so. But I like to challenge myself. I mean, even though I've been painting for like seven years now, it's it's fun to see what else I can, can do and what I can create. Um, what new new things I can learn to do. So as long as you continue to do that and push yourself, you'll always grow in your skills and get better and better. Um, you just bought this template, Ruthie. <laughs> so here's what it looks like so far. You can barely see that it goes from white down to tan at the bottom. It's, it's very subtle for sure. So now let's do the word wishes. This font has some very thin lines, so I'm trying to just go slow and be careful. Make sure I stay inside them. Because it doesn't look right if the letters get nice and chunky. I want them to be delicate and scripty. Can you show us the shape of the brush you're using? Absolutely. It's a little bitty round tip brush. Please don't pay attention to my broken nail there. <laughs> I broke a nail midway through painting splatter paint. I don't even know how I did that. It must have already been cracked or something and it just kind of gave in part way through painting. Thank you, the virtual collab. Now you just want some hot cocoa. <laughs> it's going to get a lot colder outside before I want hot cocoa. I'm one of these people that like, I do not like to drink hot beverages, not even coffee. 
And so I have to be like freezing my buns off like at a football game before I will want a cup of hot cocoa. Um, it almost like gives me a, t a stomach ache to drink something hot when I'm not cold. Is anybody else that way? Um, I've heard of a couple other people say that. And I'm like, is it just me? Is it weird? Do you get over it when you're drinking coffee? No, I'm that way. <laughs> you're that way too? Okay. Glad it's not just me. Um, if that's virtual collab, that's Chris and she's in Hawaii. When does she ever? I would never drink <laughs> I don't know. in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking virtual collab was Chris, and all of a sudden I was second-guessing myself because I, I don't know if I'm following her on TikTok, so it threw me off that she commented over on TikTok. Hey, Chris. <laughs> we missed you at the Mastermind. Uh, she joined us virtually through Zoom, but it's not quite the same. You've already started drinking hot cocoa already. <laughs> okay, Cynthia says she's like that. Nikki said she's that way. Or no, she said, I drink hot cocoa in the summer. Nikki, <laughs> you're probably keeping the hot cocoa business in business because you're buying it all year round. That's funny. Um, Missy only drinks it in hot way and cold weather. <laughs> I need to quit talk of like reading comments and finish this painting because I've got a, I think we got to, do we have a team meeting here in a bit? <laughs> Maybe I should, like, get on the ball and finish this. They have all been alerted to wait till you're finished. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, the entire team's waiting on me to finish this. No, just four. <laughs> just four of them, okay. We weren't going to have a team meeting today because, obviously, I was going to be traveling. But when my plans changed and I came home a day early, I was like, hey, let's go ahead and have a meeting. Because, of course, all this stuff that we talked about at the Mastermind is on my mind. And um, I feel like I need to, like, debrief and get it all out of my brain and give it to somebody else. <laughs> Okay, now that we got the white on there, I'm gonna add a little bit of this tan down toward the bottom. When I do the second coat, I didn't clean off my brush. And then as I go up toward the top, I'm just picking up a little more white and just kind of filling in that second coat with the white. But as I go to the bottom of the letters, I'm picking up a little bit of tan. So only the bottom part of the letters has this tan color and it's just kind of a fun little way to add shading. But if you are um, sort of a beginner painter, you're not s like confident or skilled, I wouldn't advise doing the two, shade two shades on the lettering. I would just do your lettering with white and be done with it. And this might even be one that you wanna do the lettering with a paint pen with because this lettering is so thin. Now on a door hanger that's like 20 inches, the lettering might not be quite this thin. You know, it would be a little thicker because it's a larger design. But um, on this little 12-inch piece, the lettering is so skinny, it might be easier to do it with a paint pen for some of you guys. And this two shades on the lettering is definitely a, a challenge. It's like a, it's definitely something I would consider advanced. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> Let me show you guys what it looks like. Ooh, almost dropped it. How pretty. <laughs> Hello, Heidi. How are you? Um, yes, showing it up close when I'm done. Coffee all the time. Pumpkin spice latte all the time. <laughs> um, let's see. Yes, we thank you guys for answering questions over on TikTok while I got distracted. Okay, so on our design here, can you see there's some little details? So we're going to take a brown paint pen because I have this pack of 15 uh, Posca paint pens. If you don't know what Posca is, there's the brand name. These are on Amazon. They're also linked in my Amazon favorites if you want to go grab that link in my profile. <clears throat> um, and we're just going to, let me test it out by dabbing it on a piece of paper first. You kind of always want to do that, especially if you haven't used your paint pen in a while. Make sure the paint is flowing well. And I'm just going to kind of add some little swirly designs in our hot cocoa. Let's see. Oops, let me do one over here. And we're just kind of making them kind of go around like that. Look how cute. Um, and then next we're gonna take our white paint pen. Oh goodness, I just dropped that 
I thought I dropped it in the paint, but I must have somehow missed it. Always shake them really good till you hear that clicky clack sound. If you don't hear that sound, um, when you start to use it, you're gonna have a little bit of like a watery, watery residue come out, and that's not good. And you're just gonna take this and add just a little bit of detail lines to the edge of your cup. Try to be kind of free with it, like, like you feel like you're doodling a little bit, because that makes it more fun, and it makes the, the overall effect look more effortless, like artistic, I feel like. Because if you're trying too hard to get those lines just right, it almost, you can almost just tell that you just tried way too hard to get it perfect. Okay, I added a little bit around the silver rim of the cup as well to kind of make it look shiny. And then I think that's done. On the picture, there's a drop shadow, but I don't have time to do a drop shadow today, so we're just gonna stop there. And I think it actually looks pretty good. So here's our side by side. Here's the original design, designed in Procreate on the iPad. By the way, if you want to learn how to pro use the Procreate app, we do have a course. It's linked in my profile. If you want to text me, on, if you're watching on Facebook, I can give you more information about it. My text number's up in the video description. But you can get these designs as the printable template. And if you don't know what a printable template looks like, it's like this. This is the one to our workshop that you can sign up for, hanging up behind me. You trace this on your wood using graphite paper and it transfers the design and then all you have to do is paint inside the lines. But if you're not handy at cutting out using tools or anything, just go buy the wooden blanks from us in our shop. They are come with the design laser etched on them. It makes it super easy. Like I did, I just painted right over those words and then added the words later. So I hope you guys enjoyed this today. Go grab some deco art paint if you don't have any paint. There is a coupon code up in the video description, all caps SOUTHERN20. Use my deco art affiliate link to do some shopping. Go grab you some stencils at 70% off. Brushes are 30% off. And then of course, the Americana paints are what I use. So I highly recommend these. Uh, oh, somebody said, what is a drop shadow? So if you look up close, see that black sort of shadow underneath all the lettering? That is a drop shadow. And so you can create that um, using paint pens and stuff like that, but I just don't have time to do it today. So I'm not gonna add that today. All right, y'all have a great afternoon. I'll see you later. Bye y'all.